shit! What? What the hell? What just happened? I did not that, see that. What? Was the biggest surprise of the draft. Not even, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no question. Penix going eight to Atlanta? Welcome back to the most unprofessional sports channel on YouTube. Welcome back to Swivel Chair Sports. I'm your host, Zach Zuckerberg Merkel, here at the coast today. Aaron, go ahead and say hi, Aaron. Hi. If you like our content, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment and let us know how stupid we are. But other than that, let's go ahead and get into it. So in this video, we'll be taking a look back at last night's first round of the 2024 NFL Draft, where some mayhem took place for some teams and then some great decision making took place for others and other franchises potentially seeing themselves in a little bit of a dumpster fire after night one so we'll be taking a look at all of that starting off though with the first 12 picks in the draft we saw a historic six quarterbacks being taken for the first time in NFL history. Never been seen before have we seen half of the first 12 picks being quarterbacks off the board. Obviously, the first three picks overall, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May going to the Bears, Commanders, and Patriots, respectively. And then down the line at pick eight, Atlanta shocks the world. The Atlanta Falcons select... Michael wow. Penix Jr. Well, there it is. Wow. Wow. At number 10, the Vikings could take J.J. McCarthy and then followed up by them at 12, the Broncos drafted Bo Nix at that spot. So, with that being said, Aaron, what's kind of your opinion of all of these six quarterbacks going this early? And who do you think's got the biggest potential to be the biggest disappointment? I would probably say Drake May has the potential to be the biggest disappointment. Um, the only reason I don't say it's Michael Penix is, A, I, I have a decent amount of faith in him, and B, I don't know that anybody really expected him to go at eight. Yeah. So I don't know if it's a disappointment if people feel like he was overdrafted. Whereas Drake May was, you know, in the conversation for being the number two overall pick. And if that doesn't work out, then it's just kind of, you know, obviously a disappointment. Um, yeah, that was a lot of quarterbacks. And I think that just kind of speaks to how important that position is in this day and age. Um, and how strongly a lot of people felt about uh, the quarterbacks in this draft. Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned earlier, we've never seen this many quarterbacks be taken this early before. Uh, the biggest fear you have with taking a quarterback this early in the draft is that they are going to end up being a bust. And I think Atlanta, more than the others, probably has a little bit longer leash that they're willing to afford Michael Penix. Uh, just because, obviously, they have Kirk Cousins. They have a little bit more stability at that position than these other franchises do. Uh, we mentioned the Broncos earlier this week. Their quarterback room's a mess. The Vikings are down to Sam Darnold. Uh, the Bears literally have nobody in that room at, uh, up until Caleb Williams got drafted. Uh, the Patriots just sold Mac Jones for a bag of peanuts. Uh, and are working with uh, old man Jacoby Brissett. A uh, little bit more stability there. They're going to be able to afford Penix a longer leash than maybe some other franchises like, uh, I don't know, the Raiders would have been able to do. So I think in the long run, this is probably going to end up working out great for Penix, probably, because he gets, you know, a few years. I know he's already 24, but he gets a few years to sit behind a made man in, in Kirk Cousins who's seen it all in the league at this point in his career. Um I mentioned this last night we were watching the draft. It feels kind of 
uh, Patrick Mahomes, Alex Smith-esque to me, uh, where Penix is coming in, similar to Mahomes, where he's got all the physical tools to succeed, but maybe uh, maybe needs to work a little bit more on the um, decision-making. And I think Kirk Cousins could be a, a really good mentor for Penix in that arena. Um, we'll talk about it in another video later on this week, but uh, apparently Kirk Cousins' camp isn't very happy with Penix getting taken there, so... That'll have to be something we look at, wait to see how that news develops. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm glad Penix got, got to go to a franchise where they've already kind of got some stability set up around him, uh, and he's not going somewhere where he's going to be expected to carry the team uh, right off the jump. After those, you know, those six quarterbacks went in the first 12 picks, a little bit of a lull there for a few um, as teams took some positions that you know maybe aren't super glamorous outside of the Raiders taking Brock Bowers obviously at 13 which was a little bit of a surprise considering they already have Michael Meyer Michael Mayer um but after him uh Saints went offensive tackle Talese Fuaga at Oregon State Colts went edge rusher Layatu Latu uh out of UCLA, which was a little little surprising to some. I think some maybe thought Dallas Turner and Jared Burst were higher on most teams' draft boards than Latu was. Uh, but he ended up being the first edge rusher off the board, just beating out Dallas Turner, who went 17, to the uh, Vikings, who ended up trading up uh, with their second pick from 23 uh, to move up to 17, where the Jags were, and taking Dallas Turner. Um... Jared Verse going to the Rams at 19, potentially their their Aaron Donald replacement to an extent. And then the Steelers taking Troy Fatanu there at 20, kind of like I predicted in our least, most recent mock draft. So uh, at those 13 through 20 spots, what was kind of your biggest surprise or um, what team do you think really knocked it out of the park right there, taking, taking one of their bigger needs? Probably say... Amarius Mims, only because Fatanu was still on the board. And I I guess that they saw the kind of potential. I mean, obviously, he's just an absolute physical beast. So they saw kind of the, the potential there. Um, but then that allowed, um, obviously, the Steelers to get a really good pick. I'm, I'm glad that they didn't go defense because even though that would have, you know, stacked an already great defense. I think this kind of helps their plans for the future um, with Russ and Justin Fields um, helping to keep them upright in that that backfield. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, Patanu should have went earlier, so the fact that he was, he was able to fall that far and the Steelers were able to take him at 20 I think is great for them. Uh, I agree with you that Mims kind of surprised me. I, I assumed that the, the Bengals were going to go Fatanu there at 18, so for them to go to Marius Mims uh, ahead of him kind of shocked me a little bit, especially considering they already have two uh, two tackles in Orlando Brown and uh, Trent Brown or whoever the other Brown is that they have at right tackle. So was a, was a little expecting them to go maybe more of an inside <clears throat> interior lineman. Uh, which Fatanu could do both, obviously, but uh, a lot of people project him as being a guard coming out, at least right off the bat. I thought the Vikings were really smart when they saw Dallas Turner was still available to move up from 23 and taking a guy who could potentially be their Daniil Hunter replacement after losing him to Houston. Uh, Minnesota doing a real good job building up both sides of the ball this offseason after, you know, kind of parting ways with a couple big names in their franchise with Kirk and then Daniil. Um, so I think it was smart to replace both positions in the draft with J.J. McCarthy earlier and then taking Dallas Turner here at 17, moving up, trading with the Jags. Jared Burse I also think is going to be great. I mean, I've been, I've been praising him the entire pre-draft process about how much, how special I think Verse is. Um, so I think the Rams being able to take him at 19 is huge. He's, real, he's got real good potential to be a great edge rusher for them for years to come. After those 20 spots, you know, a few picks, 
we kind of expected to a degree. Uh, maybe not the players, but the positions themselves for sure. Like the Dolphins taking a, a D lineman, taking Chop Robinson, edge rusher out of Penn State. Oh, that surprised me. Did that, that surprise you? Not, not the D line part, the, the Chop The Robinson player, part. yeah. Yeah, the player was yeah. surprising, sure, because I think they could have went other directions, like maybe a Darius Robinson or Johnny Newton. Um, but ended up going Chop instead. Uh, Eagles, obviously, we all knew they were taking a cornerback. Uh, get Quinion Mitchell instead of Terion Arnold, though, to be their, their depth cornerback of the future, as some are saying. Um, luckily, they didn't have to trade up for this depth corner, though. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. going 23 to the Jags after they moved back. I think it's a great get for them, replacing Calvin Ridley after he walked out the door and went up to Tennessee this offseason. Um, Lions trading up to take Terion Arnold at 24 was really smart, able to... Uh, uh, jump up and, and get a position that they needed really badly. We both thought that Cooper DeGene may have been a good target for them later on at 29. Uh, but seeing that Terry on Arnold was still available at 24, I think it was a really good idea for them to move up. Green Bay surprised me a little bit, taking not the position again, but maybe the player, Jordan Morgan, when other, ever some other guys like Tyler Guyton, um, Graham Barton, and... Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson were all still available. I think you could have made the argument that uh, that the Packers could have went with I, either of those, any of those three, over Morgan. But um, maybe they saw something in Jordan Morgan that they liked over those three guys. Obviously, looking to replace Bakhtiari. And then twenty eight through thirty two, we saw a lot of movement. Obviously. With the, the Chiefs moving up from 32 to 28 to take Xavier Worthy, Mr. 4-2 out of Texas. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, who had traded back with the Detroit Lions to 29, took Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. We know how much they love those Oklahoma guys. Baltimore Ravens scooping up another DB, Nate Wiggins, to play alongside Marlon Humphreys. Uh, and then the, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Taking Ricky Pearsall at 31, wide receiver out of Florida, instead of going uh, Adonai Mitchell. A uh, big story, Adonai Mitchell fell to the second round this year after uh, the Carolina Panthers. We, well, we assume, still not selected. That's true. He could, he could fall further. He could fall further. But as of now, he's at least a second round pick. Uh, Panthers moved up from 33 to 32 just to take Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. I'm sure the Bills are kind of laughing right now. Uh, Getting like the Panthers look kind of stupid. I think like it could have easily fell to them at thirty three. So, in those last five six picks, what was kind of the biggest surprise for you? Obviously, Xavier Worthy going to Kansas City after they moved up was was a bit of a shock to to most people. I think the the fact that the Bills just completely traded out of the first round was kind yeah. of surprising at first. Um, their willingness to trade with the Chiefs, I think, is the most surprising thing. We kind of talked about that already uh, in our live stream, but man, that, that was yeah, after uh, that was kind of surprising. Um, especially because essentially it was a first round swap, a seventh round swap, and a third for a fourth. Yeah. So they they didn't really get a whole lot, um, but then yeah, the Panthers moving up that didn't really make any sense to me. Yeah, I was. Uh, I think it makes sense for the Bills. I think the Bills were geniuses to do that because. Oh yeah, yeah, that that, for, that makes sense for the Bills moving yeah. back one spot. Yeah, just to lose a guy that you probably weren't going to take anyways. I would assume they probably had Adnan Mitchell. Um, maybe not. Maybe they had another receiver, Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman. But I definitely don't think Xavier Leggett was planning to be drafted by them at 32. Uh, or they were planning on drafting Xavier Leggett at 32, I should say. So I think the fact that they were able to move back a spot and get a little more draft assets for basically nothing was, was great for them. Carolina jumping up's a little bit of a surprise. But Bryce Young's dad tweeted out, like I saw two months ago or something like that, that the Panthers should try to take Leggett this year in the draft. So maybe they just had a uh, 
They just had a propensity for Xavier Leggett in Carolina after Bryce Young's dad tweeted that out. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, he did go to South Carolina. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's fair. I think the biggest surprise for me had to be Adonai Mitchell falling out of the first round. Not not specifically yeah. him falling out. The fact that guys like Ricky Pearsall and Xavier Leggett went ahead of him. Uh, and even some may argue that Xavier Worthy maybe shouldn't have won ahead of him. So I was really shocked that these teams who were going wide receiver didn't go Adonai Mitchell. That makes me a little wary of of why. Like, uh, is there something that they saw that maybe we didn't? Because I'm sure there's plenty that they see that we don't. Um, maybe, no. <laughs> maybe there's <laughs> Maybe there's something that we don't know. Holding teams back from wanting to take Adnai at the end of the first round, um, but you still got some great receivers on the board going into the second, and and him, Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman, um, some great talent at the wide receiver position still that sort of got some some teams could could take in the second, maybe even third round. So, who do you think before we before we wrap it up? Who do you think is the most likely team to? Uh, to reach for a wide receiver round two. Maybe it's the uh, the 49ers. Take another one. Away Debo or Debo or Ayuk. Yeah. Uh, in the second round, and maybe not necessarily replacing them because they got Pearsall looking to another position. Um, if you want to talk strictly reaching for a receiver, I could see. I don't know about the Steelers necessarily reaching, but I could see them looking receiver. Uh, I could see the Saints maybe looking to, to mm-hmm. reach for a guy, get somebody to compliment Olave on the other side, yeah, um, and get somebody else for a car to throw to. I think the Falcons take one at 11, and we're like continuing to just scratch our heads like, bro, you need defense. You can't win games with two quarterbacks. <laughs> Four receivers and two running backs and two tight ends. You need defense. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I I would not put it out of the realm of possibility that the Falcons take receiver at eleven, especially if Adonai Mitchell is still there. Um, eleven in the second round, that is. And especially, especially. Okay, so here's my theory, right? Kirk Cousins is pissed. He's about to flush all his Coles cash down the down the toilet right now. That that Atlanta oh, gave him. Oh, he wouldn't do that. He's thirsty for that. <laughs> he's thirsty. That's, yeah, that's true. He's thirsty for that. Uh, but he's upset. The Falcons call. He's like, Kirk, what can we do to make this up to you, man? Like, I mean, obviously you're already getting paid. We can't really trade you right now. But we can take somebody in the second round that maybe you want us to take. Who is that? He's like. You know, you know what, Raheem? You know what, Raheem? I would love another receiver. I love it. Love it. Adonai Mitchell, Keon Coleman, Troy Franklin, all still on the board. Get me one of those guys, and maybe we're okay. Maybe. Hang on the phone. Do you think, um, do you think Atlanta is like a trade destination? You think that's early enough? For like a, a Debo or a Ayuk or a Higgins or even a Hendricks. I mean Hendricks would be the right move. Like I said, the d- yeah. defense defense would be the would be the way to but go. But if they're, if they're sold on receiver, would you rather them take one of those trade for one of those receivers rather than take one of these like a Coleman or a Franklin? I'd rather them trade for one of those guys just simply because you already have the timeline of Kirk Cousins, so the the contract's not going to be a big deal um, right now. I don't know if you can afford that. It's the problem because you're paying Kirk Cousins. You do have a lot of cheap, young offensive talent like Kyle Pitts and Bijan Robinson that haven't hit their first big payday yet. Drake London, who haven't hit their first big payday yet. Um, so I don't think it would be a, a major can like, I, I, I think they couldn't afford it, but again, that kind of puts you in the same bind as you, you don't have any defense and now you may not be able to pay for any defense. So, uh, I, I would probably prefer them if they're going to just completely just 
sell the defensive side of the ball entirely this year, then I'd probably refer, prefer them to get an established wide receiver guy because uh, he's going to be able to score more points, which they're going to have to do. But Yeah, unless uh, you got anything else, though, I think... That'll do it for this episode of the Most Unprofessional Sports Channel on YouTube, Sports Chair Sports. I've been your host, Zach Sir Bert Bertle here with the co-host today, Aaron. Go and subscribe, Aaron. Bye. All right, please make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Other than that, deuces.